So we are live. We are broadcasting. We are doing a special Teachers Teaching Teachers here in Boston at, uh, what is this? The National Writing Project Annual Meeting. Um, and uh, we, it actually, this session actually starts in about 10 minutes. So um, we're gathering everybody. And Young Wan, who is joining us from the Oakland Unified District said that I'm making him dizzy when I move this around, but there's Chris Sloan, and there you can see some of the people who are arriving. Hi, say hi. Hey. <laughs> yeah. um, and what you see up on the wall are Joe Paraiso's students' posts. Actually, Joe, and they're the first ones on the Y page, and Joe Paraiso will be joining us. Joe, you're muted um, currently. Um, so, we will start in about 10 minutes, officially. And who do you get to look at until then? Hey. That's all. So, are these your seniors, or who are the kids? These are my seniors. They want to come say hi. Yeah. Come on, come on. That's why you're here. Okay, I'm going to move, and they're gonna, they want to just say hi. Really? You're going to be dorky. Hello. Go, go say hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Here, just we're we're like seven minutes before we're gonna start, but here, this is Chris Law. Hi. Oh, wait, wait. You guys wanna see? Oh, maybe I sh I should just project it, right? Yeah, my students actually write to your you guys a lot. My students are at Judge, so uh, we write uh, comments to you guys a lot. Awesome. Oh. And, and we really need, we need I, we need to get a youth voices live thing going on where we do so one of you one of you guys could start a webcast like this like you meet once a week and just talk to other students. You hear that, guys? So, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, L lots of affirmation of yay. That was a yay, yeah. Yes. Great. They're very excited. Hey, <laughs> don't be shy. Hi. I'm not <laughs> shy. Hey. What you learning? We can't talk to you. You can, you can. <laughs> Come here, tell us what you're learning. <laughs> all right, Hajar wants to tell you all about it. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Hi, y'all. Hey, y'all. Yeah. This is where you're at. Oh, I'm, say hi. Hello. <laughs> okay. So tell them what you're learning. What was the question? What we learn about in English for? Either or. Uh, and okay, so in English for we're reading Native Sun, and we are in Book Three. Hey. Right. Yeah. And. <laughs> what about your senior project? Oh, um, what well, my senior project is about is child labor. No, I mean not child labor. <laughs> <laughs> child marriage. Uh, when young uh, young girls, yeah, when young girls get married at uh, in young, uh, when they're young. And uh, I'm focusing it on Yem in Yemen because I'm from Yemen. Oh. Ask her if she's read I Am Najud. Okay. You ask her. Okay. okay. Hi. Oh, am I like way up there? Yeah, you're there. I want to be in your face. Um, I'm wondering if you have read I Am Najud. N O J O O D. Yes. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I actually spoke about it and I gave quotes that she said in my senior paper. Awesome. Cool. What did you like about that book? Uh, I have not read it, oh. but one of my freshman students has read it and loved it, and then gave a book talk on it to the entire class. Oh. So, okay. anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, to breathe here. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. See, they don't know we remote. Come on. I'm so glad you couldn't make it here, Joe. This is more fun. I, I'm telling fun. you, I'm trying to find the positive. Here's one right here. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Hello. That's <laughs> Go ahead. We're, talk about your senior project, folks. Oh, tell them. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I know they sing. I can see them, too. See? Okay. If you'd like to, would you like to tell us about your senior project? Yes. She would love to. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, 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 no. They will. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> hi. Hi. Oh, I like your shirt. 
Your shirt? My yeah. name tag? No, your jacket. My jacket. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you read my blog? So, seriously, what's your senior project on? What's your question? Um, my senior project is on teen caregivers in an African American home. So, and, and what's the issue there? Uh, what's my issue? Maintaining <laughs> Maintaining academic success. Uh, cool. How did you get connected to that question? Um, because I take care of my younger siblings. Cool. How young are they? Do you mind us asking? Thirteen and five. Oh, okay. Who's harder, the five-year-old or the thirteen-year-old? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So we should start officially here in a second. Do they need to go to class, Joe? No. Yes, you can go now. <laughs> <laughs> you think it was, it was like a rhetorical it, it question? Torture or them about rhetorical questions? <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. They have to. They will be shifting at 10:54, but I'll mute myself. So. Oh wait. 10.54, yeah, so, oh no, it's great that they're around then. Yeah, they're, they're, they're listening, if that's okay. Oh, they can do more than that. That's, okay. I mean, should we, this is not the order we were going to do this in, but since they're here now, <laughs> would anybody else like to jump in and do it? Do you guys mind? Is this okay? This is um, Joe's students, and he's, uh, one, the, the, their posts are up all around us. Hi, I'm Paul Allison. <laughs> and we're on, we're online, we're live, and uh, we're on a hangout with, Joe Paricio and Young Chan, did I get Juan, Young Juan Choi, um, and Paul O has been working with them, <laughs> and, um, and Hi, we've everybody. been working on new voices. Um, the posts um, from these students are one of the posts are all around us here, um, and we're gonna get a chance to look at them in more detail. But Joe, as long do you want to? Yeah, we're jumping right in. Uh, uh, let's do it. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what the senior project is and then see if anybody else would like to come talk about it before they have to go to their next class? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, it's very timely that this is happening right now because we were rushing to go over what the draft one process is. And so their state of mind right now is very genuine in terms of anxiety and apprehension. And you're catching them at a great moment. So mm -hmm. I'd love to have a couple of them come on and talk about, talk about that in the real. Um, the senior project here at Fremont High, uh, there's three academies, but we all follow a similar theme, and it's all along the lines of social equity, and then uh, we're moving into the realm of social change, so the kids actively uh, becoming civically engaged and then going into the community somehow, whether uh, virtually or physically, and, and enacting small change. And so the research process takes all year, um, and they do a massive exhibition they do a massive exhibition uh, May 21st or 22nd this year, and they present that to a live audience of teachers, alumni, community folks. So they get a lot of oral presentation practice this year. And then they also have to do it virtually, so they, they, know, they learn how to construct a webinar. And um, yeah, so it's a huge project that they then have to do in a class where they're also doing senior English which is why they all look like they're shell-shocked when they come up here. So, so we, w we had planned to have people start with some writing, so please get ready to do some writing. Okay. But at, and we can do that, Joe, but is there anybody else who would like to volunteer? Don't force them. I'm not. <laughs> I'm teasing. She really wanted to come up here, Shabri. Don't let her fool you. Uh, uh, is there anybody else that wants to come up and maybe ask folks to look at their blogs when they are able to? Or just tell us about your project. Or to tell about your project, DJ, come on. Okay, I've got one kiddo. Cool. Come on, DJ. Okay. This is on my set, and it's public, and it's being recorded. Yeah. And you got a view. Yeah. Yeah. And you are you all signed your permission slips, I assume. Oh yeah, we have all signed the waiver. Very yeah. good. Hello. You left. Hey, it. how's it going? Mm. Oh hi. Welcome. Introduce yourself a little bit. Oh, my name is Dijon Lee Willer, and my senior project is about how young athletes overcome injuries of their future to make it to the NFL. Wow. So what what inspired that for you? 
Uh, can you say that again? Yeah, I'll ask it better. <laughs> Where did that idea come from to, to do research on that? Uh, because um, I like football, plus like I had got injured like, when I was young playing football. So like, because people and like society, they always want to like make it big, but some don't because injury affect them. Anybody here want to have a question quickly? <laughs> Feel free. I didn't warn them that I was going to ask that. Yeah, good. Did you um, introduce yourself? If you don't hey, mind. I'm Stephanie West Puckett, and I teach writing at East Carolina University in Eastern North Carolina, the Pirates, oh. if, you, if you know our sports team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering if you looked at particular athletes um, or in a particular sport, or um, so how you kind of went about uh, researching and finding out about your topic. Um. I chose football because football is like the most likely sport to get injured on, so like that's why I chose that sport. You still playing football? Um, no, not right now. And did you look at any um, NFL football players and kind of injuries they'd had earlier in their career? Um, yeah, I looked at some like uh, Drew Brees, Tom Brady. Um, like uh, Aaron Rodgers and you know, like quarterbacks, because they're the most likely to take the contact with the ball. Cool. So, one of the hard questions that we hope to get into as we can continue talking is, and maybe you thought about it, how is this going to end up being some sort of civic action or service in some way for you? Do you have any ideas about that yet? Uh. <laughs> It's okay if you don't. Yeah. It's a hard question for all of us. Yeah, yeah I take ideas. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question you got, for us. Good. Yeah. Hi, my name is Carrie Deal. I teach at Maryville High School in Phoenix, Arizona. And there is a lot of there are a lot of older athletes who played football in the sixties, seventies, and eighties who are suffering from uh, memory loss and early onset of dementia. Um, so something you might think about doing is how the helmets have caused injuries like that in earlier decades versus what the helmets and the protection is like now with the big movement around protecting football players from concussions and such. Oh, nice. yeah, and I probably talked too fast, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. you have any thoughts? Is there anybody else who wants to join us from your class? Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They, they, they're, all, they're all asking if, if you wouldn't mind reading their blogs on our page. That's where some of them are really shy, but that's where they've also put a lot of their work, so you can yep. get a, a virtual peek. We are going to do that. Yep. Cool. Thank you. So thank you. Um, why don't we shift to what we had planned, <laughs> if that makes some sense. Um, and there are two places right up here. Um, on a piece of paper or um, online or wherever you can do some writing, we want you to free write. And we want you to free write about one of these three things. It's over here. If you're looking this way, it's over there. Okay, put it up like. So ed either educating for democracy, what does that look like? What's that mean to you? Or democracy in the digital age. How has democracy changed in the digital age? Think about that. Uh, just free write about that. Um, whatever comes to your head for five minutes, ten minutes here. Or educating in the digital age. Okay. Choose any one of those and only focus on that. Those that pairing for now. Fair enough. So I won't put up the timer. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> All right, so you are free writing um, for 10 minutes. I'm going to set the timer for 9. This is my.
Okay. Paul, Paul, you can't do that in Oakland, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> all my kids, all my kids, just they were about to get up and, and run. <laughs> they're nice. All right, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. <laughs> There's no lockdown in Fremont. They're okay. <laughs> Very fine. Now, I, you know what? I purposely don't use the bomb one, but I guess, anyway, never mind, yes. Anyway, so, um, so here, here, let's try to stay focused. The, um, here's what we'd like you to do now. We'd like you to take a minute, um, and this is right out of Peter Elbow, and people forget this part of Peter Elbow, and I always like to bring it back in. Um, it's a focus sentence, okay? So what I'd like you to do now is take a minute, um, really just a minute or two, and write one, reread what you wrote, okay? Write one really perfectly crafted sentence. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait, could you get that laugh on? <laughs> no, seriously. Um, you want to think about it as um, ad. Um, I like to uh, think about it as ad copy. Um, if you were going to summarize your whole free write into one crisp, beautiful, pithy, amazing sentence um, that makes some sort of argument in some way, what would that sentence be? Right, you only have a minute to do it, so don't make any mistakes, please. <laughs> Give us five more minutes of your fingers. Um, here's what we'd like you to do now. Um, the program, and Paul O is going to describe it, and um, Young Juan is going to describe it, and Joe um, Moore in Oakland is called um, Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age. So whichever, of, whichever one of those you did not write about yet, Pull that one into your writing at this point, okay? And write for five more minutes, adding that third one in. I'll say it again. <laughs> um, if you look at the pairs, we ask you to write about educating for democracy or democracy in digital age or educating in the digital age. The project that we're going to describe to you is educating for democracy in the digital age. If whichever one you did not write about the first time, add that in for the last five minutes here. Ready? Fair enough. And you can begin with your focus sentence. Okay. Okay, thank you for putting up with that. <laughs> All right, so uh, very quickly, what we'd like you to do right now is uh, find a one person to your left and right, kind of form a triads of some sort. Read to each other and talk about the issues that came up as you were doing this writing. We totally trust that you can do this, right? Um, and But really think about some questions and some of the issues that you think are going to come up as we introduce you to this program. Fair enough? So find a, two other people to talk to. <laughs> Actually, read what read what you wrote though. Stay with the text a little bit. Okay. Uh, whatever you want to do, just try to. You can be a four if you want. That'll work. That's fine. That's fine. Educating for democracy requires students to be invited to be wrong. For students to be willing to be wrong, they need to feel safe enough to expose themselves, to be vulnerable. I think opportunities for helping students find their voice exist in today's digital world. Students feel safe exposing their feelings and thoughts on all kinds of social media. I don't know. What do you want to do? Stay in one person? Or? Well, or, yeah, I mean, how do you use the information that inundates our daily lives? All citizens have a voice. That voice is easily projected on the internet. We need ways of interpreting interpreting those voices. Thus, education of our citizenry is more important than ever. Uh, I started with education in the digital age, and I said educating in the digital age really highlights the changes and eras between old school and new school. When I was in the classroom as a teacher, cell phones were just coming into teenagers' hands, but they were flip phones, not smartphones, and now kids all have a multitude of options, smartphones, tablets, e-readers, Wi-Fi, you name it. 
this should be a blessing, but at first it was scary for teachers. It represented a loss of control because now kids could get the answers. They can text each other quiz questions or Google the answers, but really all this is doing is highlighting bad educational practices. So actually it was a great thing. It causes educators to reconsider the notion of a right answer or the teacher owning that answer. Now we embrace the exploration of information that comes with the digital era. Kids are probably even more savvy at it than we are, but we still conform to the old ways of showing them how. We still want to exercise that element of control. But that's not necessarily a negative thing, it's just what we know. You can't easily be both young and old during the changing of the time. Working together, mentors, um, students, people who are learning, um, and while many of these questions are not necessarily new to the digital age, they are questions about values and how technology is about cultural values. Technology, I don't think, is ever neutral. Um, not least, which is technology, but sometimes um, you can. You, we see in other places social media become effective political tools. Middle East, their own society, but at the same time, it becomes not always the case. It's often, it's often that way, but it can be not so productive sometimes. Mm -hmm. Social media, and so I think this confronts us with the limits. If you with educating in the digital age, because that was an easy thing for me to connect with. Was. That's no all right. Um, no pressure at all. <laughs> so I started with educating the digital age, and I, I, I found myself. It says education, education in a digital age is a double-edged edged sword. Are we educated enough to teach? Do I have the background knowledge? As I'm sitting here trying to connect my Bluetooth, which I couldn't do. Um, um, what is a blog? Why do we blog? Um, what about technology in the classroom? We want to teach with digital media, but do we have the technology to do that? So I see it as a challenge, and I ended it with a WTS hashtag Bluetooth. <laughs> Not good. So um, geography and so democracy if it is meant to continue, is becoming known to everyone. Inevitably, it will be chosen or not by people everywhere. There are no teachers of democracy per se. The role isn't limited to a particular kind of person. Discernment of thought is perhaps a bit of a problem, but... And my time is... <laughs> and a smart board that has quite the attitude problem those days. Um, but I, and I wrote about that in my first entry, too, is that, you know, I'm geeky as it is, and I feel geeked out when I... When we watched the um, piece that Troy Hicks did this summer in the Central Arizona Writing Project, and all these, you know, national gurus implementing all this technology, and it's like our district doesn't offer PD in that, mm -hmm. and I feel like Kat and I are at an advantage being able to attend the National Writing Project and the convention because we get to learn about what's going on on a, on a national level, whereas. You know, our big technology implementation, implementation this year is turnitin.com. You know, that's our district's big push, which is, which is cool. You know, that's great, but, but that's not, you know, that's, that's, that's not going to be for kids who don't go to college. You know, if I'm not on a college path or, or the colleges or universities who don't have a site license with that. And, and we have to have more options for kids besides that. When Turnitin.com doesn't offer that, I mean it offers collaboration for my students only, mm -hmm. but you know, that bigger audience like like Twitter and right. Deck and all these other things, it doesn't offer that, you know, a bigger audience, that other audience besides, you know, their classmates or me. Right, and so, you know, how do we, how do we get kids to write to that wider, wider audience and with all of the privacy issues that come with the they don't say anything at all, they just want to know what the answer is. They don't want to think about what the answer could be themselves. They'll look in any book, they'll find it, they'll fill out any blank that I ask them to fill out. But if I ask them to think and express what they what they really believe, they don't really know how to do that. Because they've squeezed school, you know, we schooled that more computer answer into that. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a perfect moment, Eric. Right? Uh, I mean, what, what we have right now, to me,
uh, is a, in fact the, the connection I make. It's like the Catholic Church before because you we know, know there's so much out there that we disagree with. That it's a much the easier Catholic Church told you what to think, what to do, when to do it. Well, that just came out of the internet, you know. So what? And that's that's pretty Except awesome. The, the exact same time. Uh, the oh, that just came off the New York Times. So what? Uh, that idea, just came uh, off of. Al Jazeera, so obviously we can't Thinking trust that. It, it's now we may have circled the rat. You know, we 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 we've circled the rat. Maybe because we've maybe been exposed to all of these thing, opportunities to either agree with or disagree I, with what's in print. I, that I really like how it's now being taught to ask our students what is the author trying to teach you about this topic. It isn't. What is the truth? Find their voice it right is. What is the author trying to get you to feel safe enough to do that? So that right there invites you to either agree or disagree or work with. John, all right, you did it again, young one. We're going to come to you again. Yep. Or at this point, great. Okay. All right. So could we move toward the section here of the program? Okay. <laughs> Your attention, please. Um, and the names here are up here on the wall. So Paul O is going to fill Actually, in. Actually, you know what? I, he's so going to start. Young, young, young Juan is going to start. Yeah. So, so let's get Young Juan in. Yeah, he's going to get here. And then Joe will talk a little bit. And then Paul will fill in anything that we left out. Um, so um, basically, we want to have people introduce themselves and then say what this program is all about. Let's, is that enough? Go ahead. Yeah, that sounds Good great. Work. Can yeah. everybody hear me? We can. OK, great. Hi, everyone. My name is Young Wan Choi. I'm here in Oakland, California, and uh, working on the Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age initiative. Um, and I just give a little bit of background on our project, um, which is um, to say that uh, I think it's really inspired by a desire to address um, what I like to call the civic empowerment gap. Uh, and by that, I mean. Um, in our um, in studies of schools nationally, we've seen that um, students of color and poor students have really reported um, fewer opportunities to ha have access to a civic education or civic engagement opportunities uh, in school. Um, and so, um, what that means ultimately is is not just um, a challenge with what they face during their uh, high school experience, it's, it has major implications for their life post, um, you know, post high school. And so um, one of the other things that we know is that the opportunities that young people have um, when they're in high school are directly um, or have a direct impact on the kinds of um, activities that they'll get involved in later in life. So those who have civic engagement opportunities, service learning, um, the, the opportunity to consider um, ballot initiatives or political candidates have mock elections and debates, um, that these kinds of things lead to young people um, participating uh, in political and social change later in life. And so if we're not providing those kinds of opportunities across the board to all students, then uh, what we're doing is we're simply replicating the social and political in inequities that we see in our society. And so. Uh, particularly here in Oakland, given who our student population is primarily, um, you know, we have a lot of students of color, a lot of um, students on free and reduced lunch. Uh, this kind of initiative is absolutely essential because what we're saying is that uh, we want to provide these opportunities for all students, uh, not just so that they have them in high school, but so that they develop a kind of civic identity that leads to political and, and social participation uh, later in life. So that's kind of the inspiration for the work. Um, over the last year, we and this is the second year of the project. So during the first year, uh, we had a, a number can of I, teachers. Can, can yeah. I, sorry, I just want to, your your passion jumped you right in the middle of it. I don't know if you clearly introduced yourself though, or I didn't. Um, as okay. you're talking about the yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So should I just, well, so um, I, yeah. I guess by introduction of myself, I'll say that. Um, I've been a high school teacher, uh, or was in the classroom for about 10 years, and I taught um, in New York City, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, um, in Gwangju, South Korea, and um, most recently in Oakland, California. Uh, and so I've been in the role of um, 
supporting and coordinating the activities around this initiative, the Educating for Democracy and the Digital Age Initiative. This is in its second year, and I've, I've been with the project since the beginning. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about myself. Thanks. And um, I'll just say that, uh, you know, just to sort of wrap, wrap it up, um, is to say that there's three um, critical areas that we've identified, um, and we meaning the teachers as well as the staff of our project. And buckets are issue analysis, taking action, and reflection. Uh, and with each of those, there are particular considerations that I think are um, unique for the digital age. And, and this comes out of a lot of research that um, our colleagues at Mills College have done, um, Joe Kahn and Ellen Middaw and others. Um, and so when we talk about issue analysis, uh, one of the big challenges around issue analysis is um, that there's so much information that young people have in the digital era. Uh, and so part of the implications for instruction in the classroom means that we have to help students think about the credibility of what they're looking at. How do they discern what's relevant and reliable information? Uh, so when they're analyzing an issue that, they, that they're considering those kinds of biases uh, and perspectives um, as they begin to form their own opinions. Uh, and so that's something that's different. It's not that we didn't ask students to do this before, but just because of the way in which they have access to more information and potentially information from a wider variety of sources um, than they ever had before. Um, credibility becomes really important. Um, the second bucket, taking action. Um, one of the things uh, that the research has shown is really is unique about the digital era is that there are fewer gatekeepers. Uh, and so whereas before the political parties and national organizations were really um, in, vital gatekeepers for part participation, and if you weren't uh, a voting age, it became very difficult to participate in any kind of political work. Um, it's much easier uh, in this era to um, start a, you know, move on or a sign on.org petition or um, mobilize a social network um, that, that's already in place uh, around an issue. Um, it's, there's, there's more opportunity for action without uh, necessarily having to go through those traditional gate gatekeepers. And then finally around reflection, um, one of the things that we know about young people these days is that they, that they tend to put a lot of things about themselves online that um, we may not have gone public with in the past. And so what, whereas um, I grew up writing in a journal that I never showed anybody, um, you know, students write on blogs or they write, you know, uh, on their Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Uh, and they're reflecting about their lives, or they're posting about their lives, but it's in a very public way, and it has a significant digital afterlife. And so this also has implications for when we ask students to reflect on their learning, um, both that there's opportunity because public reflection allows for dialogue uh, and for developing deeper reflection, but it also has particular challenges. Um, so I want to invite everybody um, there to really think with us because I think we're we're grappling with this question of what does educating for democracy in the digital age mean and what's what's different about it and what are the implications for instruction uh, and in particular I think we have opportunity to think about uh, one particular slice of this question which is um, and I heard a lot of it coming up in the way in which um, uh, when Paul took me around with the microphone earlier uh, I heard I heard it in a lot of your conversations but there, there is this question of voice and audience, and so I would pose it as a question in this way, which is to say, um, if students develop a voice and we help them have an authentic audience for that voice, is that civic action? Is that civic engagement? Um, and, I, and I hope that we can sort of revisit that question over the course of this session. Super. Thank you so much. Oh, and sorry, I should also say that um, Stan Pesek and Paul O, who are, uh, I think both of whom are in the room, uh, have been really critical in this work. Uh, and so if they're there, I'd love for them just to wave and say, say hello so you know that we have, we've infiltrated uh, inside of the session as well. Cool. And Joe, are you still there? Mm, somehow. Okay, we'll figure that out. Oh, you are so delicious. Good. I am right here. Hi. Oh, good, good. Okay, good. You want to make sure. So, um, I, I want to encourage before Paul talks. Um, 
want to encourage anybody to say, I have this burning question I want to ask right now. Um, please let us know. Does anybody have one you'd like to ask right now? <laughs> Already? No? Okay. So That's good because I wasn't going to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I really want to talk. So uh, it's great to see Joe and Young Juan and your, your youth, Joe. I also did want to point out that Stan Pesek, if he could raise his hand, is here. So Stan actually could talk more about uh, this project. Um, Stan, Stan can introduce himself. Um, I'll just say that I work for the National Writing Project. Um, we're based in Berkeley. And our role in this project is to really think about the, um, the affordances of the digital possibilities, um, the, the the ways in which the digital is having an impact on what does it mean to be um, civically engaged today. So uh, in a general way, that, that is our role. And I just wanted to quickly say a couple of things. Um, one is that uh, in relation to the, the, the three buckets um, that Young Juan talked about, I think holistically what's true for young people, um, we see this in Oakland and I'm sure you see this in your school districts, is that um, you know, our youth are, are crafting online identities. And I think uh, you know one of our questions um, as well is what does it mean to uh, for youth and young people to develop um, civic identities uh, online um, and in online spaces, and uh, that's actually a question that is also really that that's being taken up by um, a network that involves some of the people from Mills College, uh, the group that we're doing this work with, um, but in a broader sense. Um, so if you so who here saw the plenary this morning with Henry Jenkins? Um, great. So this notion of participatory culture is actually also informing um, this broader conversation that we're having with people like Henry Jenkins, um, with uh, Howard Gardner, um, with other groups uh, facing history and ourselves um, as part of something called the Youth and Participatory Politics Network. Uh, and, and that work um, has this broader context that, um, of which the, the Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age work is uh, sort of an instance of and there are several projects like this around the country. Um, and we're, as part of YPP, we're developing this you know, broader framework to think about well, what does it mean for youth to engage in um, politics today. Uh, so I just wanted to give that broader framework and, and really explain why the National Ryan Project is interested in this work. Um, it's for all the reasons that Henry talked about and the, the plenary people talked about this morning. Um, and it is really about uh, this notion of, in a very fundam fundamental way, um, you know, what is the, the sort of education? What is the kind of, uh, what is the kind of um, person that we would hope would come out of our experiences, both in school and out? And I think that's the other piece that I just wanted to add to what Young Wan said. You know, our project really does, um, this Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age project really does see that, you know, with the affordances of the digital, uh, learning happens all the time. I mean, that's true for us and that's true for our youth. And so we also are really trying to work with partners um, to think about what, what kind of civic learning, what kinds of civic engagement can happen in out-of-school contexts as well as in school. Um, so where, where are the ways in which we can partner? Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, but you can keep talking later. No, no, <laughs> that's great. But I, I just I wasn't sure if Stan wanted to add anything to this. Sure, if you want to at least introduce yourself a little bit, Stan, sure. how you're part of the project. Uh, I'm Stan Pesek, and um, when the project started, I was history coordinator for Oakland Schools. And so it was National Writing Project at Mills College. We came to Oakland to partner on this project. And we kind of jumped to the opportunity. And we spent a couple of years, a year piloting the project. And one of the things we wanted to do with this was to not just think about the civic education, but the and, and digital piece, but also think about how this weaves into day-to-day -day classroom life. So it involves teachers who are, teach English history, grades mm -hmm. 9 to 12. So it's got a vertical strand. So when Joe's students are doing a senior project, what skills do they have and what knowledge they need and skills to develop, but how does it start in ninth grade consciously and build those into a day-to-day -day practice? of classrooms to teach world history or US history would look like in those in those places too. So it's an ambitious project, it's a challenge. Great. Super. Joe, we're more or less on time. Are you okay? Um, you're you're on your teach your break, right? Yes. Okay. I am. You still have more time to talk to us, I hope? I yeah. do, I do, I do. Okay. Now it's on my conference period. I have a few students okay. in the room, so well, thank um, you for giving us your conference period. I really appreciate no it. worries. This is fun. This is always fun. So um, in terms of introduction and the work we do, 
Ah, uh, yep. gosh, is that the question? Start with yourself. Uh, myself? <laughs> yeah. That's a complicated <laughs> self. Okay, uh, let's see myself. My hero, how about that? My hero is Yoda, and so I take all the advice from Yoda, which is great. Um, but I am I teach in Oakland. I live in Berkeley. I have three children, uh, two of whom are teenagers, uh, one who is a kindergartner. So a lot of my um, what I care about in the classroom in terms of digital literacy stems from just being a mom and understanding that the world out there is really crazy and then seeing that in my own house and, and having to deal with that as a parent, um, that definitely gets carried into the work as a teacher. So that's me and then how the teacher part of me is, it's I don't know, it bleeds back and forth. Uh, so the work we do here, and I, I teach senior English this year. I have looped with one set of my kids, uh, so this is my second year with them, and it's it's absolutely wonderful in one respect. And then I have another uh, media academy class that I teach, and then I teach AP class. And so that's my teaching line, gentlemen. And my kiddos are excited; they're over here. Um, and. Right now, I teach. I have two functions. I teach senior project, which is a graduation requirement, and I also teach uh, senior English, and we study third world lit. And a lot of the the themes that run through both, uh, this theme of social equity and change, uh, we we practice skills, we practice lens questions uh, that then apply to both. So the kids, they're feeling two graduation requirements, but the skill sets are similar. What I love about the digital literacy aspect, though, is that they can publish their work so authentically and in the moment like they did today and get and just have conversations with people and make connections and see how their work in the classroom then where it can apply who it's important to um, outside and and it's 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 truly amazing when we can get out of the bubble of our own classroom so teachers in the room you know that it, it's it's we we operate in a bubble sometimes where it's difficult to do that um, and the kids just they loved it that whole experience this morning you guys don't know what, that, what that'll do right now for their senior project. And it, it gave them a boost that they really needed just to notice, to know that there are people out there that do care about the work they're doing in here. So that's a lot of what we, uh, where I go with the teaching, is how do we get, um, how do we get exposure to the work? Uh, and how do we get the kids to understand that their voice is very important? Um, and we do that through blogging a lot, but we do that through, through a lot of other methods. Um, and I love it that the people in the room that I know, Stan, Paul, Young Juan um, and Paul, uh, they 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 really push that we share our work as teachers, um, which has been very important, especially in the last two years. And a lot, all of that's been very virtual, digital. So it, it's amazing. Can Can you break that down a little bit? Because which you've part? talked other times about leadership and moving into leadership roles because of this. Project. Oh yeah. Um. So wow, that's been that's been interesting. Um. So not. At first, I didn't understand. I, I felt like we were breaking ground in the classroom um, with some of the practices we had, so blogging as like a routine. But I didn't understand that a lot of other people who, yes, are professed tech tech geeks like myself, like how do they how do they bring that into the classroom? I didn't I didn't know that they weren't doing those those things or they were they were challenged there because it's it's a it's a lot of who. Um, I am to, to, to have a device and to be to be savvy like that but it's also um, when it comes to the students and understanding like that's where they are at as well uh, you got to talk about that in, in, in your with your PD teams with your teachers how how do and we always talk about how do we form these connections and 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 we talk about how how do we get how do we vibe with the students more so that they understand that the learning is relevant and that's the bigger question and one of the aspects, one of the ways it's, it's addressed is through technology and through active engagement with the community. And so in terms of leadership roles, you know, a lot of this work that we do here is it bleeds into a lot of the other PD that we're doing at the school when it comes to, say, um, equ equity-based teaching, when it comes to curriculum design through and, and, and improving the rigor. It, it does, it factors into that. And so I've just started to just, not just working with teachers at my site, but but feeling a, a stronger voice in this community, this digital learning community of teachers that are trying new things. Um, but also in, in my with my own students, because we're on the same journey, it's it's we it's watching and being a part of something as a teacher where you don't necessarily have to you're not leading the classroom. They are all all of the students if we have this culture here now of a, of collaborating on things. And so I don't always have to be a leader. It's it's amazing. And then a 
And I think that that's, that's been the best part of it all, is that the students are just, they take over a lot in a very positive, positive way. Uh, and so when I can say that to people, to other educators, and then they can feel that, it, it's, it's that, that's where I feel like, okay, cool. Like this, this whole taking on a different role as a leader, it doesn't hurt. It's not too, it doesn't freak me out too much. But it's been a different year this year because of, of, of it all. So. Little conversation. Who wants to throw in here? Yeah, please. Somebody else talk. I just feel like I went on and on. <laughs> oh, I have a but don't be shy, Chris Sloan. Hey, Joe. Um, you know how my my students um, comment a lot on yours. Yeah. Um, on youthvoices.net. On youthvoices. Which we're going to get to. It's only on youthvoices.net. Yes. Can yes. you talk about maybe how that does? Do you see that conversation? Um, helping them as thinkers and writers, and maybe how uh, that plays out in your class? Yeah, I do. Um, a lot of the topics that my students are bringing to the table, because half of their blog postings are about their senior research, and it's about equity topics in communities that run deep, so we can talk about, you know, maybe police brutality. Uh, you heard some of my, my other kiddos with, you know, child marriages, things that are very real to them. And what helps in the thinking is not just, it's connecting with somebody else who's far away. Um, so understanding that there's a world beyond Oakland, which is very big for them. Um, and when they are prompted to question what they believe, and it comes from a peer, that is very valuable to them. So oftentimes, you know, I have teachers that would respond back to the students in their blogs. But the students value the other students and those words more so than they do. Um, the grown-up in a way because the kid that they're talking to knows where they're coming from on a developmental level like you know just just knows what they're feeling and they can say it in a way that you know I think I'm cool and can say things a certain way but the kids can talk to each other and so yes it does push their thinking and you know some students get you know 10 to 12 comments uh, off of one posting that's very powerful stuff when you've gone through many years of your life not not thinking, thinking that people don't listen to you, and then suddenly you've got gobs of people listening and saying something back to you. Um, even if that dialogue doesn't continue, uh, back and forth, back and forth, uh, there's this action of somebody responded, and so then my students are then more prone to respond or, or think that that's important. Um, so it helps them with the issue they're posting about, but it also just helps them in, in, in terms of a skill of learning how to listen. I have a question. Cool. Mitch, say your name. My name is Carla mind. Treatman. I teach at Wairika High School in far northern California. Um, and my question is, in the blogs in, where students are responding to each other, um, how do you teach them the proper way, and I don't even know if that's the right terminology, um, to respond? Uh, the, what brings this up, we just had a huge issue with our dance contract at our school. And there was, you know, kids were very vocal in what they thought the dance contract should be, how they thought that should be navigated. And to me, that's civic engagement. That's a concern for our community that kids are really engaged in. But the language usage that they had um, kind of minimized their argument. And, and that, that process of teaching kids how to interact civically, I wonder how you guys have, have navigated that. Well, we can say, I mean, Joe, you can talk to that too, but we can say very quick, we're going to spend a, the last 20 minutes here um, mm -hmm. looking at that exactly. So, right. Right. yeah. You will do it. So, thank you for asking thank that you. question. But other thoughts? Oh, well, I just want to add before, and, um, yeah. in response uh, that, that Chris Sloan actually wrote a piece at the Digital Is website um, that is about this notion of civic um, dialogue in online spaces. And actually, you know, it's a, it was a complex piece, but um, or a complex story, but uh, we should definitely share with you That'd be great. The, the link to that. Other questions, points that you wanted to get out here in the room? Anybody? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm, Your Barb name. I'm Barbara, Thank and I teach in Idaho. So my question is, is our sophomore lit is now called World Lit, which is what I'm hearing is your senior lit. And then you talked about calling it third world lit, and my, of course, my community would actually have a cow over that. <laughs> I'm serious. It would be Which the part end. Of Idaho. Northern, no, northern by Canada, yeah. And 
you know, as far as the civic, you know, and she tried doing an, you know, an eastern, an eastern section um, of the lit as a sophomore teacher of mine. Huge blowing up, you know, as far as like, oh, they're actually reading from the Quran or they're actually reading from whatever. And as far as you know, how do you deal with that? As far as being civic, I mean, this idea of a, a world citizen. They also had a concern about we're not members of da da da. We're United States. I mean, that's we're United States citizens, not blah blah blah. That's the issue we're seeing. Joe, you have any response to that? <laughs> um, I do, and that's that. That goes back to that being part of of you know, the networks of of being in, and being in the forum like this, and being able to hear what the experiences are of other educators around. I go back to Oakland, and and that is what we need to talk about. Um, that is what our population wants to learn about. So when I, and I say third world that we're you know we're basically looking at um, what what they what the people that they look like have gone through. So in terms of addressing um, in terms of that concern, I guess I'm I'm spoiled. I'm going to put that in super air quotes uh, that I don't I can I I can talk to those texts. I, I can talk with those texts with the kids. And um, I do have to keep in mind that when I tell the kids, you, you are lucky that we get to study this, because there are other places where, um, uh, forgive me, uh, where it's only canonical dead white men literature, and and it's 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 <laughs> you read that too, but but they should know that they that this is this is we are trying to use the literature to 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 get them to connect, and that's 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 where I'm that's what I'm saying right now with them. Um, so I really haven't had addressed that much, that that aspect here. We we teach, uh, yeah, because I don't know. I'd be denying my entire class what it means for them to be part of a, a citizen citizenry um, because they are constantly excluded. Um, so that would be my answer for the folks that would say something. I, I, wonder, I wonder if Young Juan has a thought yeah, about this. Yeah, I was going to say the same. Yeah. Anything that's gone on in the past uh, half hour, you've been out there listening. <laughs> Anything you're thinking right now? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I think that that's. I don't know if there's a particular point you want me to address, Paul. Uh, Paulo, I don't know when you when you were asking me to come into the conversation. Well, I just I just wondered if you had a thought about this notion of um, you know what 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 does it take uh, I guess to to alter curriculum in the way that I think you're describing um, and to be able to do that in a way that um, you know I suppose both honors the the interest in the community but also you know broadens those perspectives right I mean I think this is a tension that we um, think about a lot within our project which is tension around um, you know, leading from student interest and also expanding student interest because I, I I think that um, on the and and I think you know I don't think what Joe is saying is just, is that you know we're only going to teach the things that are you know that come out of the community that are directly written by people who look like the students. Um, I think that would be very uh, limiting, both in terms of their exposure to to different kinds of ideas and perspectives, but also in terms of their access to. Uh, the canon, which I think does have you know huge relevance when it comes to you know social capital and 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 being able to navigate college and that sort of thing. Um, so I think that we're 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 looking to strike a balance, you know, and I think every teacher has to figure out that balance in their own classroom of like how much um, do we you know how do we how do we honor and recognize our students for who they are and what they bring to the classroom and their life of their their history, their culture, their traditions, their life experiences, uh, and in Oakland, that's not a uniform thing. That's a really multifaceted um, set of you know set of experiences, um, as you could tell just from seeing the student from Yemen who was in Joe's class, as well as um, you know just getting a quick little snapshot there. Um, but at the same time, how do we also um, Help them to be aware of the the broader world, and I think you know what Joe's talking about in terms of the blog is is an opportunity to see and interact with people outside of Oakland. And I think we get really insular in not only in our classrooms but in Oakland, in our sort of liberal um, bubble over here. <laughs> that uh, and I think that we don't um, 
we have an opportunity, I should say, through um, these kinds of networks like Youth Voices to, to broaden the conversation, to have our students begin to consider what their ideas mean in relationship to other people, uh, and not just the people that they spend um, time with face-to-face, -face, but you know, what are the implications in, in a global world and, and, and nationally. Can I just add quickly, um, one of the things that I think a number of teachers have been talking about uh, in relation to issue analysis is this notion of bias and perspective. And I can imagine that, um, so, so I, I mean, I think that that means a, a lot of different things in different places, but I think it is, to me, a legitimate point of inquiry. You know, so, so what is bias? What is, uh, you know, what, how do we understand different perspectives? And what are the texts that are going to present, you know, these opportunities to understand bias and perspective? Um, so, so I think, you know, it, if that is the thing that you're investigating, um, which I think is is a part of this project, you know, this notion of um, issue analysis. And I think, uh, you know, our youth then have to be open to exploring different possibilities. I mean, I don't know if that's something that would fly, you know, with with uh, with a group. But I mean, I think it's 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 our general understanding of that's what we want to present to our kids. And you know, our hope is that actually that that is a notion that is portable and scalable and could be implemented in other places. And the yeah, when we talk about reading this in the, in the classroom, so in history, considering multiple perspectives is at the core of the discipline, right? You have to look at multiple perspectives, and how do you, how does that learning that history help you take those skills and apply them outside? Um, and democracy requires you to cross cultural boundaries, pull on your own what you know, but also the cross cultural boundaries. So when you say you can't teach these certain texts, it makes me sad because those students aren't going to be engaging democracy when we envision it, that kind of crossing boundaries. Okay, so uh, when we were planning this, we wondered if we would get through this whole thing and never say what Youth Voices was. Um, and we have done workshops like that, so I want to take a minute <laughs> to, to say what Youth Voices is and then give you some experience in it. Um, and um, by showing you some of Joe's work, which is all around Joe's students' work, so <laughs> which is all around the room here. Chris Sloan here, and I started, <laughs> um, um, and and some others um, uh, in the National Writing Project started Youth Voices now ten years ago. Um, we've been on different platforms, um, and we are delighted to be where we are now. It's a pretty secure place, and we um, in the middle of the table you will find lots of cards. Please take all of them if you'd like to. And this one will show you how you and your students can sign up. That's one very important thing about Youth Voices. There's a, a hopefully a pretty low point of entry. But more importantly, one of the things, and Chris can talk about this as we go perhaps too, but one of the things we learned really, really fast is what you were saying. And I'm sorry, about, about responding. Um, and um, we spend, if it's fair to say, we spend a lot of time on commenting. So my students comment uh, between four and eight times before they even post the first time, right? Mm -hmm. So learning how to comment on a social network like this is really important. There are, let me just say a little more, there are about a dozen. I, I come from the New York City Running Project. There are about a dozen schools in New York City that are on the site and about a dozen throughout the country and, you know, more and more um, all the time. Um, and we're really happy that Joe and her students and some other folks in Oakland are coming on as well um, as, as we go. We can answer some questions. I um, want to give you an experience of it, though, if we can do that. Uh, and we use these differently. I'm just going to own this part of it. <laughs> Chris, as Chris's students maybe don't use the guides as much, I think, in some cases. But in the middle of the table is something that says on a general discussion response. So this is an activity that we want you to do, and then we'll talk about it. Fair enough? Okay. Um, and uh, so Joe's students, one of the things that she has them do is write this really, I, Joe, this is going to put that out, but a really tight kind of five-paragraph thing where there are five things they have to answer about their project at the beginning. And they post that on new voices and kind of get a response. And those are hanging up around the wall. So what we'd like you to do is get up. <laughs> and uh, get some energy and find a post up there that you would like to respond to. And it's not going to be fake. We really, really want you to respond to that student. OK? And we want you to use this guide to do that. Um, these guides, I'll say very briefly, are obviously they look like fill in the blank at first. 
But if you look a little more deeply, they're just very structured kind of rhetorical structures that we ask students to do um, and guide them in, in responding. They can let go of the details as soon as they kind of understand what they're doing. We're asking you to choose either the first one, probably this one on top, or the second one here. So you're in task right now. And we'll do it in hopefully 10 or 15 minutes. So you might not finish, but at least start. Go up and find a question that you think is interesting or important or that you would like to respond to. And sit back down and do some writing to that student. If you want to do it right on Youth Voices, you can. If you want to do it on paper first, you can do that too. OK, we'll show you how to find it. You can search for the title is one way to do it. So first, you need to find one. And feel free to peruse and watch them. I'll show, more than once, so don't worry if you, uh, you know, if you I'll show you guys what they're doing. If you pick one, somebody won't be able to do that one too. Oh, you got some students there? Go ahead. Okay. We can we can do both things. Is that okay? Um I yeah, here, yeah. Here. I'm gonna take my go face for it. Off. I'm yes. not here. Sure. Frank, thank you. Hold it. Come here. No, go ahead. Have your students talk about their projects if you don't okay. mind. Go ahead. Frank, you see yourself? Here. Talk I about what you're, what you're studying. <laughs> oh, I was studying on teens using marijuana. Cool. Oh, oh more? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> Okay. Are you are you the young man who um, who my student my sixth grader responded to and you're wondering how to respond back? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what was that like to have my sixth grader respond to your questions about marijuana? Uh, it was challenging because I didn't know how to how to answer the question without influencing him in a negative or positive way. So mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out a way to tell him the good and the bad, but don't encourage his opinion on it or like influence him to go. Either way. Yeah. What? So, have you finished that response? I haven't seen it yet. Did you? No, I didn't post it. Okay. But I will. I was going. So, what's up, it. man? Well, he's waiting for you. Okay. Isn't I'm, I'm going to post it. Right now. Right. Hey, now. Frank. Uh, look, Frank, you know what? So, sorry, guys. You can, it's just so God. <laughs> I'm glad to talk to you. Um, his name's Devante, and he's um, like he is. Uh, I, I think it's okay to say is he is issues in his family, right, around drugs and stuff. And he recently, in his art class, and he just put this up on Youth Voices, you might find it, um, created a superhero um, who, when that superhero cries, um, he gets energy all over his body, right? And Devante is somebody who is hard to control. He gets energy all over his body all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what, that, what that superhero is trying to respond to is um, people taking drugs in the community. So... Yeah, <laughs> just to add to your burden here a little bit. Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> now I really gotta think about how I'm gonna respond to him. Yeah. I, I, Frank, I, this is Young Juan from Oakland, um, and uh, I had a question for you, which is, um, what makes you? Because um, I don't think that every person would have been that thoughtful about, you know, not wanting to influence him one way or the other in the way that you responded, and I'm wondering how you came to that, if that was just something, you know, is that just a way that you are in the world, or is, it, is that an influence of somebody else who really uh, instilled that kind of value of, of, of not trying to, you know, um, cajole other people into your, into your beliefs or something? Because when he replied to my post, he was like, oh, drugs are bad, and you're, you're like, you're young, you shouldn't be doing drugs, so I want to keep that same mind frame for him, but I don't want him to think, okay, Drugs are not good. His his main argument was, you if you're not if you're not of age, you shouldn't do drugs. So, I think he had enough understanding of drugs enough at his age level. So I don't want to tell him more or not enough about it because he's at a good point. He's mm -hmm. like at a point where he's he's oh, he's aware, but he's not too curious about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't want to tell him some something that might interest him. Like oh, you look cool when you do it. Maybe they mm -hmm. think you look cool. He sounds like he's smart enough to know not to do it, so that's why I don't want to like influence him to do it. Great, thanks. One of the things I'd like to underline is that we're right in the middle of your research process, right? And and you're already publishing about it. 
and getting feedback about it. So that's kind of important. Um, do you know where your project's going to end up yet? Do you nope. have any sense? No? Hmm. Any guesses? Nah, I'm not sure. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Cool. All right, so um, you can. Uh, so, uh, Joe, if there's somebody else, that's great. Um, if not, you know, I know no it's problem. late in the day, uh, and you could not do this, but I would say, really, there's a lot of power with what you're about to do if you put a comment on one of Joe's students. So please do. Yep. And follow the guide, even though it looks like a pain. We want you to kind of have that experience and then think about it. Um, like, is it helpful? Where, where, at what point is it helpful and at what point does it get in the way of your kind of expressing yourself? Right. That's a fair way to say it. Yeah. We'll be quiet so you can write for a little bit. Joe, unless you want to interrupt at some point. Just to say thank you. I, I, on behalf of my kids, thank you. This means a lot to them. Cool. So I have a couple of students, uh, Joelle, Frank, and Hajer, that would love it if you were to read their blogs. Are they there now? They're here right now, and they're squirming that I'm even saying this. <laughs> but his name is Joelle, and then there's Frank, and then there's Hajer. What are the topics? Uh, Joelle and Frank are both looking at marijuana. Frank is looking at um, marijuana legalization for hyperactivity disorder. And Joelle is looking at it and trying to explore whether or not there are any positive academic effects um, from its usage. Marijuana happens to be a very interesting topic over here in Oakland. Yeah, we noticed. Um, <laughs> see that? I'm just saying. Like five of them. Um, and then uh, Hajar is studying, again, about uh, child marriages in uh, Middle Eastern culture, specifically Yemeni culture. So th there are no names on these at this point, but oh, I'm sorry, was I supposed to not it's name? Okay, but th that's why we asked for the topic. I wonder. Oh, go, I'm sorry. Okay, gotcha. Go to the schools page. Yeah, or? the schools page would be great to Fremont High. But also, oh, yeah, that that works. That's right. And it's, we're all over that there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you're on youthvoices.net and you go to the schools page, you can find most of the schools that are on the site. Not all of them. And she's at Fremont. And she's, and she's at Fremont, and then you can find the students. They have done further posts than this one, by the way. This. Yeah, so can I just say that the most recent posting uh, was their updated senior research thesis. And and there we did that so that the teachers here and other community folk, I sent that out to everybody um, and assigned people in the community to the kids. And so that's what their most recent posting is, is them putting their thesis out there so that they can get feedback from their assigned uh, grown-ups, professionals, so you are that community of folk and you would respond to those postings, that, that would be awesome because they just did that and, and using it to guide the, the final revision of the research thesis which is due uh, by the end of Thanksgiving. Great vacation. A couple things worth mentioning. Um, all of this is possible because, not, I mean, it's not the only way it's possible, but it's made a lot easier because Youth Voices is a public openly networked site, right? Um, we don't, there's, so in, there can be local blocks, but we don't vet everything that goes up. But on the other hand, there are all these teachers who are involved in it who keep track. And, um, you know, if a, if a curse word is used in a response, for example, and the rest of the response is fine, I'll just delete the curse word and, you know, <laughs> talk to the student about it. But the whole response is still there, you know? So that right. being able... So I've been thinking a lot about other networks that can be on. Personally, if I can't administer it, the back end of it, like I can't administer Twitter, I can't. I, right. I'm I'm not so sure I want to use it. So, <laughs> but that's where I am personally. But okay. So yeah. And all this the teachers, the all the teachers on here can administer really the site. Resistant. Good. Me too. <laughs> to this, and I'm just curious about. Okay, so it. let's talk about it. Uh, but, Let's talk about it in this way. Yeah. So, Ken, what time is it? Yeah, we need to start. So, can, can you interrupt for a second and talk about, let's talk about that question. Um, what it's been like using the guide. And just talk about it for yourself as a writer, as a student kind of writer. What was it like for you? Can we start that way? 
And you're saying it's resistant. You're resistant to it. Yeah, and we'll quiet. get back to it. Yeah, good. If that's all right. Um, Say so your name again if you don't mind. My name is Carrie Deal, and again, I teach at I teach um, grades 9 and 10 at Maryville High School in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, this is my first NWP. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the piece that I chose really resonates with oh, the like, community. I like that you're doing that, too. Go the ahead. community yeah. that I teach in because... We have this anti-snitch community in Maryville, and we have a high, we have a high number. Uh, we're a Title I school, so low-income area. Uh, our kids are predominantly Hispanic, um, Spanish speakers as their first language, and there is this anti-call the report crime mentality because uh, maybe you've heard of this guy, Sheriff Joe from Arizona. Um, and, and so we have a lot of undocumented people in the Maryville community who are afraid to report crime for fear of being deported. And so this is precisely why I chose this piece, because my kids and I have read some articles about that. And I had a guest speaker come in a few weeks ago um, who is very involved with the Center for Better Neighborhoods. Um, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I have all these ideas. I'm just going to start asking this kid all these questions. and. And, and and direct this student to the Center for Better Neighborhoods because maybe that will help him or her, hopefully. Okay. Go ahead. Do you want to? So we, I, we, we want to do both things. So let's keep going a little bit that way. We will get, hopefully. So what else did you find there? And But let's also talk about the process of using the guides and how that felt to you. Okay. Yeah. Go but ahead. start with what you found there. Yeah. So I, I too chose a, a piece that resonated with me personally and it happens to be about the use of video games and the positive and negative effects of video games and I chose this piece because I have two teenage sons that I think overuse video games. <laughs> and and the, the author of this piece says that he or she is aware that parents are confused and worried <laughs> that they, they, their children are using video games too much. And I appreciate the scaffold provided here because I wanted to go on and on about why I connect with this student and this piece without getting to the point of giving the feedback that they're hoping for as well. So I think that the scaffold helps me to stay focused on what the reader needs, but it also is loose enough that I can connect with the reader or the writer and why the piece connects to me. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Well, and and I also discovered something about myself, thanks to this author, whoever it is. Tommy, that's Tommy right there. OK. We'd so, love to have you respond to him. So listen to this. Um, so I said that I have two boys. Bobby is 17 and Benjamin is 14. And they seem to play video games nonstop. And I have not helped the issue because I'm the one that has purchased the games, the computer, the television, the game system. <laughs> and I can see how I, <laughs> that my actions confuse them. Why would I provide these resources for them and then tell them not to use it? So there may be a piece you got a there, <laughs> we all I do. know, <laughs> about why do we provide these things for our students or our children and then ask them not to use it. Well, can we get back to her point, though? Yes. About the Do you want to make to You want to, and then we'll we'll let you talk. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Lacey. It, and I'd really like to address that as well as include your comment. Um, so I'm thinking about um, some things that we really shy away from, formulaic writing and, 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 and that. But I also pair that with um, text structures. And I'm thinking Gretchen Bernabe. And we are using a lot of her text structures in... Um, some of the schools that we're in right now that have high ELL um, percentages. And I'm thinking about how using this as um, a guide or scaffolding or as a text structure would be extremely helpful um, for those ELL students that are trying to learn um, this particular type of response as far as general discussion response. Um, agree, disagree response. And I agree with you in that it gives a lot of opportunity to include um, your own thoughts and to um, to build on this. So um, I, I really appreciate it and will definitely be 
um, taking this back and using it. Go ahead, make your case. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Well, you know, Lacey, when go um, when you hand it to me, I mean, I was just like, uh, I, you know, coming from a history of um, people pressing worksheets, kinds of stuff, um, you know, into my classroom, I immediately have resistance to it, and and I I really own that. I got to thinking about like how do I go about figuring out how to um, do response. Um, I've never, as a writer or a person responding in various places, I've never used a structure like this. Mm -hmm. I first I read how do other people here respond. So I go and I read and I find out like oh what's happening here? What's what's the way that I could do this? And I mean that's the way I go about writing. So it's not that I'm avoidant of structure, but it, rather than coming at it from a here is the structure, you know, I figure out. Oh, like what are what's happening here? What are what are the ways that people do it, and um, and then I can try to enter that conversation. So to enter that to enter that dialogue, um, the, the, there are over fifty guides on the site now, <laughs> and the way the guides are created is by a student does something wonderful, and we pull the content out, right? Mm -hmm. So the guides are are kind of organically built. Yes. On the other hand, this particular guide, the commenting guide, is right out of Peter Elbow. Okay. The, the, two, the two paragraphs where you're pointing <laughs> come out of his pointing suggestions to point when you're in a small group and global response at the beginning and be nice at the end. I don't know. You know yeah. They're encouraging dialogue in some way. Okay. There, and, and if you look at Gerald Graff's work around um, sentence, you know, giving people work. Um, these kinds of structures, that's where it's coming from as well, a little bit. But, but we kn we know there it, there are issues around it. I can also say that in in my like when I'm I work as as fast as possible in an asynchronous way, so the kids are doing all sorts of things all over the place. So when a kid is over there and they need to do this kind of response, I don't have to sit down and and teach it. I can say, okay, follow this for now. If it really drives you crazy, that's okay. Let go of the third paragraph. We don't care. But yeah, so yeah. in I, practice, yeah. I was thinking too, like the context really matters. It matters a lot to me that this that you gave me this call uh -huh. because then I felt really free to say, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, rather than this coming down from the <laughs> you know, the, think the, about the, that a lot. the teacher's <laughs> manual or something. Yes. The relationship matters. Yep. And we encourage you to put one up yourself. Yeah. Right. So. But, yeah. I really like this format, and I'm not really um, big on formulaic writing, but what I do think this is effective for is meeting students where they are and helping them advance um, grammatically, language-wise. There's enough freedom for them to be able to say um, what they want to say with some um, guidance from this, this format for them to be better writers, and I think that that's really an important tool for them to be able to use to find expression um, digitally. So I appreciate cool. this very much. We're, uh, we're over time. Sorry. Um, thank you all. But um, we should, uh, here's, if you don't mind, some last words from you guys out in California. Um, Young Wong. Yeah, I just want Thank you. I wanted to jump in with a final comment, which is um, to think about how all of this relates back to the question I led with, which is voice plus action, or sorry, voice plus audience equaling action. And I know that we don't have time to hear responses, but just as something to think about as you're engaging with these students and for what it must mean for the students to hear back from you as an authentic audience for their ideas, is this actually civic engagement? Um, and if it is, you know, why? And if it isn't, why? But um, just to think about, you know, by encouraging students to, to have an authentic audience for their writing, uh, in this way, are we creating the conditions for civic engagement to happen? Um, is it civic engagement? Thank you. Wish we could spend more time with you, and we will. <laughs> so we we do have a plan to do a, a couple of TTT shows, teachers and teachers, which are is every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, with um, you and some other teachers from the project. Is that right? That's right, and uh, Paul O and I were were throwing around the date of January twenty second, and I know we haven't run that by you, Paul, but uh, if if we can tentatively say, uh, we, we, okay, we might be we might be uh, talking about this topic on January twenty second. Great. Uh,
would love to have everybody there join us again. Cool. Joe, thank you for uh, you and your students. Yeah, then thank you guys for you know you guys I hope you understand that when you comment to them and they comment back to you, this is a dialogue exchange that they never would have happened. And what I'm seeing in the room from this end is not the demographic that they are very that they that they see on a daily basis where we are. Um, so it is gonna I'm gonna show them this footage and show them that people are out there that are listening that are very different from you. And when the comments that they read from you, they're gonna guides or not will reflect other people and who are different, and that's okay. And and they're gonna read that, but they're gonna see that the earnestness in the room is very genuine. And you got you all truly do care about you know the student voice aspect, and that's what that's the vibe I'm getting. They're gonna see that, and so this is amazing, and I appreciate the fact that you are responding to them and engaging with them in this way. Um, it, it will go really far for their research. Um, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Do you have anything you want to say, Paul? Uh, no, just uh, <laughs> thanks. Good to see you all. <laughs> and right. and um, I do want to say that this was, believe it or not, a special episode of uh, Teacher Seats and Teachers, which we've been doing now for eight years every Wednesday night. Um, and you can join us anytime you'd like at edtechtalk.com slash TTT, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Am I on camera? I hope not. Um, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, Thank you all. I uh, always like to say at the end that that um, webcast was started at, with the EdTech Talk community, edtechtalk.com. Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier started all that. Thank you all. This goes up online almost immediately on YouTube, um, and you can see it there. Um, and sue me later. No, sorry. <laughs> Bye, Joe. Bye, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you.